Pixie, this is Redshift, and today we're going to talk about telescopes. Woo! Specifically, we're going to talk about this telescope, which is a Newtonian reflector telescope. It is the telescope I use. It is the telescope a lot of amateur astronomers use. Uh, so I'm going to learn about that. You're probably asking yourself, what is a reflector telescope? because it's the title of this video. So there are basically two types of telescopes used in the world of amateur astronomy today, the first being a refractor telescope, which looks kind of like your telescope emoji on your phone, and the other is a reflector telescope, uh, which looks more complicated than it actually is. The main difference between the two is refractors use lenses and reflectors use mirrors. Uh, I'm gonna mainly focus on reflectors today because uh, that title. I do have a reflector telescope with me, so we're gonna go outside to learn about it because I don't really want to point at things in my dorm room. So, let's go! We're outside! Um, <laughs> okay, so this is a reflector telescope out here in the wild world where we can actually see things. It is a motorized telescope, so it doesn't have the counterweights and different axes. It's just all right in here, so we're just gonna focus on the main tubey part up here. Okay, so there's basically two parts to this kind of telescope, maybe three parts, mostly two. There is a primary mirror in the back, a secondary mirror about here, and then the eyepiece. And so the primary mirror in the back is what gathers in all the light, and then there's a secondary mirror that reflects it back into the eyepiece so you can see. You can come over and look. The mirror in the back is concave, so it's, it's like a spoon. So it's like a, a really big spoon, so all the light gathers into one point, and then it reflects off of this guy. Um, and that mirror is angled, so it goes out through the eyepiece. A lot of people think when they see this kind of structure that like having this mirror in the very center of the whole thing is going to make it so that you can't see the image, but because the mirror is concave and because it's so big compared to this little mirror, um, there isn't that much light eliminated. and so. If you look in here, you can see um, what it looks like without an eyepiece. I'm gonna go ahead and put an eyepiece on there and maybe we can look at some, some trees or something. Oh, another part of like all telescopes, not just reflectors. You have one of these guys. And so this guy, this little guy is like kind of your guide. And this is like a really wide view of the whole sky. And so you find what you're looking at through one of these and you point it Say so we're looking at like that leaf over there, so I'd point it at that leaf, and then I'd look through here, and then I'd focus it, um, and then that image would be whatever I'm directed at through here. And you have to align this, but then you only have to like align it once, so it's fine. What I'm doing now is with a motorized one like this, you just use these little these little guys to like turn it. You can align it to a couple different stars, so you'll like point it at two different stars in the sky, and two or three, and it'll know it'll have an idea of where it is and if you like plug in something into the scope it'll be able to like find it so that is how that works with manual telescopes you have to like find it yourself and keep it tracked this one will keep it tracked not so great but it'll keep it tracked so that's really helpful in a telescope having tracking and like knowing where things is things is <laughs> knowing where things is what is tracking tracking is that's a great question will okay so the sky moves you know, like yeah. <laughs> the sun is going down over there, the moon and stuff will come up, and when you have a telescope, you have to keep it pointed on those things. And so if you have a manual telescope, you have to keep adjusting it to where it is in the sky, because it'll move really fast if you have a really big eyepiece. So with one of these like this, it'll just keep it tracked on the sky and it'll keep going as um, time moves on and the sky moves at that pace. So that's what tracking cool. is. Thanks, Will. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hold me <some. laughs> Look at those trees. But now if you can see, I go, wow, wow. Different leaves. So now I'm changing the focus. So yeah, that's how that works. That's pretty dope. Pretty dope. One thing about, whoa, woo. One thing about both a reflector telescope and also, I think, refractor telescopes is the eyepiece. So when you're looking in the eyepiece, you're looking at everything upside down. Um, and that's because of the lenses and the concave mirror. There's stuff you can do to um, change that and flip it right side up. But if you flip it right side up, it's going to be backwards. 
and honestly it really doesn't matter um, it's just it's something to keep in mind if you're looking at the moon and if you really want it right side up you shouldn't because there is no up or down in space <laughs> the end let's go back inside Besides the one you just saw, there are also different types of reflector telescopes on different types of mounts. The one you saw was a motorized mount, which is a really good one for beginners because it's really easy to find things. If you're a little more advanced, you can use one that has an equatorial mount, which is the one I have back home. It uses counterweights. You may have seen that in previous videos. But the thing with that one is it has two axes and one of them I think is parallel to the Earth's rotation, so it's a little bit easier to track. It's got counterweights. It's a little complicated, not too complicated. And the other one you'll probably see a lot in the world of amateur astronomy is a Dubsonian mount. And so that one kind of works like, what do I have? <laughs> I found the thing. We're rolling. We're rolling with toilet paper roll. Oh my gosh, we're rolling. So with the Dubsonian one, you don't have a tripod, but you have like a base. And so the telescope sits on that base and it just, it kind of moves from there. The visual mechanics of a Dubsonian are exactly the same as on a tripod, a Newtonian mount, or EQ mount, it's just that. With the Dibsonian, you can definitely have a lot bigger mirrors, which mean you can capture in a lot more light. So that is the basics of what a reflector telescope is. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video and you want to see more, please subscribe, and I will be back next week with a new video. I don't know what it is happening here, but uh, bye. I feel like... I feel like I low-key kind of look like Kim Possible. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yep, definitely. What's it? How does it turn? The... Do, do, do. Yeah, do. I don't know.